Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at a couple of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming auction, specifically Boebert pistols. These things are an absolute dream for a total gun nerd. They have so much weird mechanical stuff going on in them, uh, compared to pretty much anything else currently on the modern market, that they're just awesome. The problem came when it was when we tried to translate awesome into lots of commercial sales, and that's where Boberg ran into some issues. So um, this project was started, in, invented, by a guy named Arnie Boberg, uh, lived in Minnesota, he's an engineer, and had been tinkering with guns for a while. Um, when he got his kick to actually produce his own gun and create a company was in 2009, when he was laid off from an engineering job. So got the, the spark to do something on his own, uh, got some capital, set up a company, and in 2011 released the company's first pistol, which was the Boberg XR9S. Um, that was followed by the XR9L, which is the slightly longer barreled version of the 9mm gun, which unfortunately I don't have an example for you of today. And then in 2014 they released their third project product, which was the XR45S, as you might suspect, a 45 caliber version of the same thing. Now, uh, the whole cons the whole reason for these pistols is to maximize barrel length while minimizing overall length, the bullpup thing, um, except in a pistol instead of in a rifle. So that requires totally new style of magazine, a uh, totally different style of feeding, and then since you're on a roll at this point, let's just go with one of the weirder operating mechanisms we can come up with, say rotating barrel. So let's uh, take a closer look here and see what all the cool mechanics are inside these things. Here they are up close, the 45 and the 9, and let's start off by actually getting a little bit of size perspective here. This is a Glock 43, and it's one of the most comparable um, alternative carry pistols to the Boberg 9S. So these two guns actually have almost exactly the same barrel length, but, as you can see, the Boberg is about an inch shorter overall. So that's the benefit that you're getting there. One might ask, what's the point? Why is that relevant? And the answer is, well, at least Arnie Boberg's answer, I suspect, would be the longer barrel allows you to have more velocity, which in turn also leads to better expansion in hollow point type bullets, and is more effective. And that's why it is worth having more barrel length, and of course having the smallest gun you can makes it the most easily concealable. So that's the justification. And we can see the same sort of comparison here between the 45 caliber Boberg and a Glock 30S. Um, again, they have virtually the exact same barrel length, but the Glock is definitely a bit longer. Now normally in a semi-automatic pistol you're going to have a cartridge sitting about here in the magazine, and the slide's going to go back, open up the chamber, and when it comes forward it's going to push around up and into the barrel. Just like that. So the magazine is behind the chamber. On the Boberg, however, the magazine is actually set up backwards, and the cartridge is pulled out of the magazine rearward, lifted up, and then pushed into the chamber. Which means you can have the chamber basically parallel to the magazine. So when this feeds, it's going to pull the cartridge out the back, lift it up, and then drop it into the chamber and thus you get your long barrel in your short pistol. Let's pull this apart and see how that actually works. Disassembly is thankfully simple. Pull the slide all the way back, rotate the lever forward. Slide back, lever forward. Now the slide just comes nicely off the top of the frame. We have a recoil spring. The locking system, because this is a locked breech pistol, is a rotating barrel. So we have, that's how it's actually going to cycle. We have this lug on the bottom of the barrel, and it is locked into the frame. You can see the half round cut out there. That mates up with this right here, when the gun's disassembly catch is in the assembled position. So this lug remains fixed to the frame. As the slide starts to go backward, that is going to force the barrel to rotate. So there we go. right there it's going to start to rotate. You can see it more easily at the back than at the front. Just a little bit of rotation, just enough to disengage locking lugs, and then the whole thing slides forward, then it's going to 
go through the whole feed cycle. And when it locks up again, the barrel stops moving here, the lug continues, and locks it in place. We can further disassemble this by opening it all the way up to the front, lifting this lug out. So there is uh, grease on here, and that is done very deliberately to aid in proper cycling of the pistol. But you can see the cam track right here, that that rotating lug uh, travels in. There are three lugs in total on the barrel. This one is just for rotation, these two are your actual locking lugs, and they are going to lock into the slide right back here, right there, and there. Now the feed system is pretty cool here. Um, you can obviously see these two tongs that rotate up and down. Those are spring-loaded at the back, and when the slide goes forward, these snap around the rim of a cartridge, like so. And then when, it, when the slide opens, uh, that's going to pull the cartridge backwards out of the magazine. It then pivots up slightly, just to right there, and that is going to bring the cartridge up uh, basically into the bottom of the breech face. Once it's here, it then needs to get pushed all the way up into the extractor, like so. That is done by an extra lifting mechanism right here in the back of the frame. So we'll cock the hammer, because it the slide at this point would be backwards, so it holds the hammer cocked. And then the rest of the slide is actually going to push on this little lug right here, which is going to pivot that lifter up. And that is what kicks the next cartridge up into the extractor and seats it, so that when the slide goes forward, it will seat nicely on the barrel, and then you're ready to fire again. In order to do this, of course, the magazine is funky and weird. Uh, there is no follower, there's just the magazine spring, which is actually, it's unconventional, but it works just fine. You have nice stout feed lips, because all they have to do is hold the cartridge at this height, and it gets pulled straight out the back. Um, so in theory, this is actually an easier type of magazine, a more reliable type of magazine to manufacture, which is cool. Um, in this way, this harkens back to only one other historical pistol, really, and that is the Mars pistol, which, by the way, I have some video on if you're curious about how to do this, but make it Victorian, well, Edwardian, really, uh, steampunk, uh, and massively magnum in caliber. Capacity of these, by the way, is 7 plus 1 uh, for the 9mm version, and 5 plus 1 for the 45 caliber version. The recoil spring that Boberg uses is remarkably small. Um, what's kind of interesting about this design is that Boberg has a number of other elements set up to basically bleed energy out of the system, uh, rather than just relying on a recoil spring to try to slow down the slide. Um, in particular, this lifter mechanism sucks a lot of energy out of the recoil stroke. Um, despite maybe what you see online, this, these aren't you know, these aren't recoilless pistols, they don't shoot like 22s, they in fact shoot like compact 9mm. Um, but this is something that does make them uh, less painful uh, than a lot of a lot of similar guns. So you've got that, you've also got um, the, the locking system, which does in fact draw some energy when it cycles. As for the particulars of shooting, this is double action only. So there is no manual safety on it. It really isn't necessary. Um, it does not lock open when the magazine is empty, because of course the mechanisms that do that are generally run by a, a thing on the magazine follower, and there is no magazine follower here. The sights are a rather typical um, standard three-dot sort of arrangement. Um, magazine release is entirely normal, just a, a button right there. I've got two snap caps loaded in there. Once again, to show you the loading process, um, when the slide is forward, the little grippy arms have grabbed a cartridge by the rim, and it will pull it out. Sorry, it's hard to do it slowly. It'll pull it out there, and you can see, in fact, at this point I have kind of jammed the thing up, because the tip of the bullet is a little too low, and it's hitting the base of the barrel. What that means is I didn't pull it far enough back for that lifter to fully engage. You can see right here that the cartridge hasn't come up into the breech face. So, if I pull it back a little bit more, right there, you can see that cartridge has been pushed up into the breech. Now it is directly in line with the barrel, and it will feed. 
one might wonder, why hasn't this sort of thing been done more often? There are a few, few answers in that this is more complicated, it has more parts um, than a traditional style of pistol. There is also an interesting and probably unexpected um, problem that arises with this, and that uh, has to do with ammunition crimping. So when you're making the ammunition, of course, you have to decide how tightly to crimp the bullet into the case. And this, this varies by manufacturer and by purpose. When you feed a cartridge forward, like so, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you're mainly worried about making sure that the bullet doesn't bounce loose under recoil while it's sitting in the magazine. However, when you're pulling the cartridge out backwards like this, you're, you're actually pull, you're tempting to pull the case off of the bullet, because the bullet has a lot more mass than the case, and that mass tends to want to stay at rest uh, when the, the slide goes to yank it backwards. And this does have the effect on ammo that isn't well crimped of leaving the bullet sitting in the magazine while pulling the cartridge case off the back. It then attempts to feed the empty case like a cartridge, which usually means that it jams, and the powder kind of goes poof and flies out everywhere. This is not actually a dangerous situation, it's not like that powder is going to ignite, um, but it is a rather inconvenient malfunction to clear. Um, and Boberg has well had to be right up front about this from the very beginning, maintaining a list of ammunition that did and didn't work in the pistols. So that is an unfortunate complication as a result of this very unique rearward feeding system. Unfortunately for Boberg, uh, the project didn't go entirely according to plan. Uh, I don't know any details of the company's finances, but in 2016 uh, the whole project was sold to Bond Arms, um, a good established firearms company down in Texas. Bond Arms uh, reworked it just slightly, rebranded it, and they are now selling it as the Bond Arms Bullpup Pistol. Uh, whether Boberg was forced to get out because he wasn't because it wasn't a financially soluble company at that point, or whether he just decided it wasn't all that much fun anymore working in the firearms manufacturing industry, I don't know. Uh, but the upshot is that the original Boberg pistols have already become collector's pieces. Because if you get one now from Bond Arms, it's going to have different grips and a different finish and a different name on it. So if you're the true collector type, of course you need to have the originals. Now, there are probably more than a few people who saw this series of events coming uh, the first time they laid eyes on a Boberg pistol, but that's OK. They're extremely well-made guns, and really cool. Just not necessarily everyone's uh, cup of tea for daily carry. So if you're interested in either of these two, they are coming up for sale here at Rock Island. Uh, check out Rock Island's catalog pages. Um, they'll have their pictures, their description, their estimates for the prices, and all that sort of thing. Um, as well as, of course, everything else that's in the, the upcoming sale. Thanks for watching.